What if the next Captain America movie was uh, Captain America returning the stones? Then not only would he have to uh, travel in time, but he would have to travel through space to multiple planets. And then at the end, have to meet up with the Red Skull. It would be a great movie, I'm sure of it. But the best part would be at the end, the end credits would be of uh, Captain America and Agent Carter relaxing, maybe still dancing. And then the Avengers, because they have a freaking time machine, they show up and ask Captain America for help with the Eternals or something. I don't know with whom. Not only would we get another Captain America with the original Captain America, but we would get another Avenger movie with the original Captain America. It's perfectly fine if we have two, a black and a white Captain America in the same movie. I don't see anything wrong with it. But it would be another movie with the original Captain America. How great would that be? That would be amazing. So anyways, though, so I'm not going to critique the movie. I have no idea how people assign numbers to movies. The best I could do is tell you if I liked it, didn't like it, or that I didn't understand it, and I definitely liked it. It, was, it is a great movie. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to critique... From a scientific point of view, critique the time travel aspect of the movie. So this video is going to be about time travel. So the movie was way off on the technology of uh, the time traveling device, the technology to travel in time that was way off. It wasn't even close. We know exactly how to time travel. We know that it's impossible, but we also know how to do it. Travel to the future, you simply have to travel at a significant percentage of the speed of light. Let's say that we were able to travel within a vehicle at half of the speed of light. Within our vehicle, the rate of time we would perceive as normal, but the rate of time of the universe would seem twice as fast. And as we increase, getting closer and closer to the actual speed of light, the rate of the of time of the universe would accelerate. And then as we reach the speed of light, the rest of time of the universe would be instantaneous. We could end up at the end of the universe if we're not careful. But if we were able to surpass the speed of light, the speed of causality, we would be able to travel backwards in time. And then not only would be able to go backwards and forwards in time instantaneously, but we would be able to instantaneously travel through space. We Our reach would be limitless if we were able to do that. But we know that that is impossible because anything, anything outside of photons, photons being the particles of light, anything that has mass cannot travel at the speed of light or anything close to the speed of light. So we know it's impossible. We know how to do it, but we know it's impossible. It's a strange situation. But what the movie did actually get right is the uh, physics of time travel, of going back in time and not being able to change anything. In, uh, in the movie, the Incredible Hawk said, he said something to the effect that uh, if you travel to the past, that past becomes your future. In other words, that you won't be able to change it. I think that was his point. And, they, and the way they did it, that seemed to be his point, that you cannot change the past. Let's say that we travel to the past and we want to change an event in the past. We would either have zero effect on the event that we try to change or to some degree actually cause the event that we were trying to change. Because we cannot change the past. Because if we travel to the past, we are already in that past. Even before we knew that we were going to travel to the past, we were already in that past. And we already did the things we tried to do to change the past. So you cannot change the past. Maybe to uh, better illustrate this, let's imagine that we create a time machine that creates a porthole to the past. Through this hole, we can look to the past. On the sides of the uh, porthole, there would be knobs. The first knob would move the uh, porthole backwards and forwards in time. The other knobs would move it around in physical space at the particular point in, in time we have it pointing at. So let's say that I decide I'm going to jump through the porthole and go to the past. I first have to look for a place in the past where I am already in there, maybe diving in or something. Because if I'm not in there, that means one of two things, that I decided not to jump through the porthole, or if I jump through the porthole, somehow that porthole annihilated me. 
So let's to test the theory. Let's say that we throw a football through the porthole and we see the football go through. We see it bounce on the other side of the porthole. What that means is that this, this time machine porthole is not a time machine porthole. It's a porthole to another universe that has a similar past to, to our past with the addition of that football. The point that I'm trying to make is that we cannot change the past. Whatever happened in the past already happened in the past, so we cannot change it. If we are able to travel to the past, that means that we are already part of that past. That means that whatever we did or plan to do, we already did it and it didn't work out the way we thought it would. We either had zero effect on the event that we were trying to change or to some degree we ended up causing the event that we were trying to change. There is no other option. I know that some scientists say that if you travel to the past and you change something that you would create an alternative timeline. The timeline would branch into two and then you would have a universe where you changed the event in a universe where you did not change it. This to me does not make any sense whatsoever because let's imagine that I decide I'm going to kill Hitler in the early 30s. So I traveled to the past and uh, forgetting that my skin color would probably may tip them off that I, that I should not be in Germany in the 1930s. But let's imagine that I'm traveled to the past and I'm able to stab Hitler in the back and kill him. How could the act of stabbing somebody cause a duplicate universe with equal amount of matter, equal amount of space and a duplicate timeline? How can the effect of me stabbing Hitler have the same effect as the Big Bang? How can I create all that? that matter, all that space, with the act of stabbing somebody. That does not make sense to me. It cannot be. It would either be that the event that I'm trying to change, I had zero effect on it, or to some degree, I ended up causing the event that I tried to change. There is no other option. And the movie got that right. They avoided those paradoxes of time travel. So anyways, the movie was great. I plan to watch it again. I hope they keep uh, the original Captain America. I hope they make at least one more movie of Captain America. Hopefully another Avenger movie with Captain America. I am as pleased as I can be of how they made this movie. I guess that's it.